Hello everybody! So I haven't made a video like this in a long, long time, so I apologize if this review uh, isn't up to my standards. I haven't done a review in a long, long time. But today I'm going to be reviewing the anime series Witchblade. This is a 2006 Gonzo series which was produced by Funimation and dubbed in by Funimation as well. The set itself is an anime classics version. You can buy this from your basic retail store or write stuff on Amazon, of course. And I really, really like this set, personally. It has five discs in this box set. So it's the whole series on four discs and then an extras disc with um, a lot of different stuff. I haven't actually um, explored the extras disc for this series yet because I just wanted to finish the series and kind of get my take on the whole plot first. Um, and I really, really enjoyed this series. It was actually a really big surprise. Um, I've heard good things about this series and um, I just never gave it a chance and now I'm glad I did because it's probably in my top 20 anime. Possibly, maybe. My, my top favorite anime just gets grows more and more by the day, so it's really hard to pick a favorite, but I really, really enjoyed this series. The basic premise of the plot is that it's about a woman named Masane who is um, living with her daughter in Tokyo. She recently just moved back into Tokyo with her daughter, and um, they moved back because six years ago there was a huge earthquake that happened that destroyed the whole city, or at least part of it, and she was the only survivor in this destruction of this earthquake, and while she survived, she had her child with her, and so it was just her and her child, Rico, as a baby, and it was very devastating, but now they move back to Tokyo six years later. And as soon as she does, she finds out that she is on the hunt by a bunch of different corporations and people that want her witch blade. The witch blade is basically this thing on her wrist. It's like a bracelet kind of thing that um, basically, when it's activ activated, it turns her into the witch blade, which is this this girl right here on the cover. This is her witch blade form, and it, it gives her immense power, allows her to destroy anything she needs to, whether it be a an ex-con or which is like a monster esque mecha thing, and. Um, it just gives her the power to destroy, basically. It's really like an addiction, um, the power that she gains. It's like an addiction to destroying things. Sort of like an addiction to sex, but destroying things, getting pleasure out of destroying things. So, it's really interesting. There are many other characters in the series besides um, Masane and her daughter Rico. There's also the director of the Go Doji industry, which creates these weapons, and that is Tokozawa. And he was an interesting character. I really liked him. He was very, very interesting, to say the least. And you can tell that he also really, really cared, despite creating all these horrible machines. And her, his whole plan is to destroy, not destroy, but to, like, eliminate war in a way that sort of, kind of, eliminate the casualties of war because, you know, he has these machines that can fight for the humans instead of humans, and it's very, very interesting. They end up living at this sort of diner slash hotel, which is run by a woman named Mariko, who is very spunky and very... don't she doesn't take any crap from anyone, and she also has a husband named Cho, and there is also two other people, three other people living in their house, there's Michael, who is very, very quiet, doesn't say anything throughout the entire series. He doesn't say one word. As well as a photographer slash journalist named Tozawa, who was voiced by Robert McCallum, who I love to death. I love Robert. He voiced the character of um, uh, Sensui in Yu Yu Hakusho and Baki in Baki the Grappler. I love that actor to death. There's also a group of people that are trying to get the witch played along with the doji group, two different groups. There's the doji group that's trying to get her and they kind of allow her to work for them. And then there's this other group who has a completely different plan, which you'll find out when you watch the series, that is just really deceptive and it's very not good. Not good. I know I haven't done a review in a long time. I'm sorry. This is... I, I can't even form words anymore. I think the major appeal of this series, for me at least, is the fact that 
Masane's character and her daughter Rico. That relationship is so well developed and just so heartwarming and adorable and just it makes you so happy that they're together but at the same time it's just so emotional and it makes you want to keep watching to find out what's going to happen with these characters. They were well developed and I love them both. I didn't think I would like it because it was a little odd at first. It's a very odd series, but by the end, I absolutely loved it. I love the ending. I think the ending is so heartfelt and emotional, and it just broke my heart. It just totally broke my heart. But I do think that that ending is, like, the only ending to the series I would accept. So I really, really enjoyed the ending. I love the series a lot. So I definitely recommend Witchblade to fans of action or drama and um, as well as just like political intrigue I guess in a sort of way. Um, it's very very good. I highly recommend it. So I hope you go and check out Witchblade. I'm not sure where you can watch it legally. It may be on Netflix. I think it is actually. And it might also be on Funimation's website. So if there are any legal streaming sites to where you can watch the series, I will put them down in the doobly doo below. I'll also be putting links to Right Stuff and Amazon as well, so you can buy the series if you're so inclined. So thank you very much for watching, I hope you all enjoyed this review, and I shall see you guys next time!